prayer skill is arguably one of the most important available in the entire game, allowing players to protect both themselves and their items from disaster, while also allowing them to deal incredible amounts of damage. In this series, I'll be using it to the fullest while trying to complete some of the most difficult PVM challenges and making sure an altar is always close by. This is my Altar Chunk Iron Man. Hey everyone, and welcome back for episode 8. Last time I left off doing some temple trekking so I could cap off 55 Slayer and start using the Magic Dart spell for Barrows. And when I'm done, I'll also spend a little time with the Agility Pyramid, which I did unlock in the last episode so I can get a bit of a cash stack going so I can buy a ton of Death Runes. I'm actually pretty excited to see how much of a difference it makes using that spell, especially going up against the Melee Brothers. I, uh, I'll also save up a little extra so I can go ahead and buy full Mystic, and then after that I'll head over to the current Catacombs so I can get my Rune Kite Shield and Mithlar Boots off the Jellies. After I have everything gathered up and all ready to go, it'll be time to hit Barrows again and knock out as many chests as I possibly can. So let's head on over and get finished up with the last few Slayer levels. Damn, I got really lucky on this pull. What is that? One, two, three, four, five. It looks like six Slayer Tomes. That is going to be some beautiful XP coming in. Let's see what kind of levels we end up with this time. 50 fishing. 61 mining. Oh, there it is, 52 Slayer. That jumped me up. What was I, 50? I was either 50 or 51 before I started this, but that's awesome because now I can, yeah, now I can go after the jellies, so uh, I'll probably still wait and do that later, but if, yeah, I could go get that gear anytime now, so that's awesome. Another full inventory of Tomes down, and that's going to end up getting me to 53 Slayer. I seem to get pretty lucky recently. I get about an inventory and a half worth of Tomes in an hour, so I shouldn't have too long to go before I can hit 55 and get out of here just now notice that the slayer counter in the top left corner it keeps ticking down it, like every time i finish a few temple tracks i tried doing slayer like manually i went to uh what the hell is his name the slayer master under edgeville i legitimately forget what his name is and he gave me crocodile so okay i'm not gonna do that task obviously but yeah i just noticed that keeps ticking down every once in a while that that's got to be a bug Okay, so now I figured out what's going on. Every time I open a Slayer Tome, for whatever reason, the game thinks I killed one of my Slayer targets, so that'd be kind of cool if that was a way to, like, actually work the task down. I wonder if I did enough of them, if it would actually count, like, towards the actual Slayer assignment. I kind of doubt it, but that'd be kind of cool. Another full round of Tomes done, and that's going to get me to 54 Slayer. It looks like it's probably going to take me, I would say, another three to four inventories worth of Tomes, just based on my luck recently. I seem to get... Like, no, I've never gotten more than six, but I usually get at least three Slayer Tomes, so hopefully I can keep that up. And this is going to be the last inventory of Tomes I'll need to hit 55 Slayer. This was a pretty fun minigame, actually. It's really relaxing if you just do the easy pass. You can skip all the combat rooms, and you only have to worry about, like, one or two of the rooms with zombies since you need the logs or planks to get through. But other than that, it's pretty nice. So now I can move along to the uh, Agility Pyramid and start working on that big old cash stack. Starting off strong with 58 Agility after just a few laps of this run. I tried doing this before uh, I got all those extra XP tomes, and I just failed way too often for it to be worth it. I Honestly, I probably failed like four to five times per run, but after doing Temple Trekking and getting all those levels in, it has been way better. I still fail like maybe two to three times per run. Sometimes I get really lucky though, and I just don't fail at all, or I just slip down one and I don't even have to worry about eating a potato. I only uh, actually ended up bringing like eight or ten potatoes on this run because I wasn't really sure like how much food I would need to bring versus water skins. Plus I could also, uh, I could trade the pyramids in just to save space like one at a time, but I'd much rather let them build up and just see that cash stack grow before I have to bank in Narda again. I'll probably wait until I have like at least a mill before I worry about going and buying like Mystic and Death Runes and a few other things. So I'll still be here for a little while. This is another one of those things like Barrows or Temple Trekking. I just never really bothered with my main account, so it's actually pretty cool to see like a lot of this content for myself as I play this account. And I'm hoping by the time I have like that first mill saved up, I'll hope hit at least probably 60 agility because that'll push me into the next recovery bracket, so my run energy will last me a little longer. I was trying to think of like what else I need to buy in the future that would need a lot of gold, and other than Probably some more death runes, and I, I can't even think of like any gear that I could buy that would help me out right now, so nothing else really came to mind. Plus, I can always high out bear with pieces I don't need, so that'll just be some free money on the side. I do still have to insure Rocky, though, so that'll that'll cost me another 500k, because I think it's, what is it, a, if I die, it's a mill to get him back, so I'll definitely have to come back here again for that. But actually, come to think of it, I, I did say before I wanted to make a bunch of upgrades to my house, so I'll have to pay for like... Planks and other materials. I know I can buy like bolts of cloth and stuff from the uh, sawmill, but 
I think over in Keldegrim, you can buy a few more materials, like for higher level stuff, so I'll have to look into that. But I also do want to have more portals in the house, so that's going to cost quite a bit, because those rooms are like 100k a pop, so... I'll definitely be spending a lot of time here in between like certain grinds if I burn out at Barrows or if I'm just doing something in the future and I just want a bit of a break. I honestly probably just come hang out at uh, the Agility Pyramid and just earn some more cash. So I was talking to one of my friends and he mentioned that uh, the new runecrafting minigame can actually give you a pretty decent amount of runes from the prize pool. So I decided to take a break from the Agility Pyramid just to go check it out. You do need 27 runecrafting to actually get into the minigame, but that was easy since the uh, prerequisite gets you all the way to 26. The wiki says it's supposed to get you enough XP to hit 27 if you do uh, both the Abyss and the actual quest that leads into the minigame area, but like, I don't know, either I screwed something up or maybe the wiki is wrong on that, because it only dropped me off at 26. Like, I obviously hadn't done any training beforehand, so I don't know what happened there. It was fine, though, because thanks to unlocking the chunk before when I came down to the Edgefield Dungeon at the start of the series, the Abyss is actually totally usable since the uh, Zamorak Mage that sends you there is right in the safe chunk itself, uh, right up nearby the river. I just had to craft some air runes, and I was pretty much good to go. I could just head right into the mini game. The game itself isn't too bad. The only annoying part at low levels is balancing your points out because you need for every for every time you want to pull from the prize pool, you have to have one elemental point and one catalyst point. The problem is at lower rune crafting levels, you miss out on a ton of the catalyst because you can only really craft like mine runes, body runes, maybe chaos runes. You know, at those lower levels, so you have to get up a little bit. So you can unlock things like cosmic runes and nature runes. That way you have a little bit better of a chance and you're not just sitting there waiting for the next one to pop up. I actually did decide to go ahead and do Lost City because that would give me the, the ability to unlock cosmic runes and that'd just be another catalyst I could use at uh, the Guardians of the Rift. I haven't done this quest in forever though. It is crazy to me how short it is. You can save spot the uh, Tree Spirit boss if you have magic runes because that's you are allowed to bring those on to Entrana. So the only real threat down there is maybe the zombies because you do have to get an axe off of them to chop the limbs. Or if you just get super unlucky and get tagged by one of the greater demons that are down in the dungeon. But with a few Chaos Runes and the uh, Crumble on Dead spell, that fight was super easy. And I was able to get out of there and get the quest done. I'm actually sad to say, though, I didn't really stay that long. I only pulled maybe a dozen times from the prize pool. And I mean, not that I was expecting to get, you know, a ton of Death Runes or anything. But I really didn't get anything of note. I got like a couple hundred Chaos Runes. I was really hoping for one of the Caskets or one of the Uniques. Because the Caskets, you can open up for like a few hundred chaos runes blood runes death runes so i just ended up going back to the agility pyramid i'll probably come back and try this again now that i do have a few higher levels and i can make a few more catalyst runes so getting points towards the end of the game and stacking those up probably won't be as bad at this point but for now i'd rather just go back to making some money i wasn't paying attention and i did miss level 59 getting a clip of that but i did hit level 60 on lap number 60 so that's kind of cool just how things work out like that that also does give me the god war shortcut so that's nice to see I'll probably end up, it looks like, maybe at 61 or 62 by the time I leave with my cash stack. And as soon as I finish this lap, that's actually going to go ahead and drop me off at level 61. I also am going to stay here just a little longer to get a few more pyramids, but once I cash them in and go toss everything in the bank, I'm going to go ahead and go get my runes and my mystic robes, then it's time to go down into the catacombs so I can finally farm the jellies and get my kite shield and my boots. So, apparently all my RNG was being saved up for this because I've killed a whopping... Seven jellies, and there's the kite shield. The drop rate on this thing is uh, 1 in 64. So now all I need is the boots, and based on my luck, I'm not going to be down here for long. Okay, I don't know what is going on, but that is the second kite shield drop in 10 jelly kills. I can only kill a handful of them before I have to go bank, so either someone is rigging this for me, or I was just destined to be flooded with kite shields. I... I've, I've got nothing. That is three kite shield drops in 14 jelly kills. No boots yet, by the way, but I am absolutely drowning in rune kite shields. That's another 60k to add once I out them both. Okay, my luck ran out a little bit, but there are the boots. So the last thing I want to do before going back to Barrows is I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish off 52 prayers. Since I have a little extra money, I can buy more runes for the dragons. That's going to be coming in with level 50 prayer, and I actually didn't know you could bless your own holy symbol. That's kind of interesting. I always thought you just had to go get it from the monastery. This will be coming up on 51 prayer in just a second and just one more level to go before I finally head back to Barrows. I was actually thinking about like what chunks I might unlock next in the next few episodes and I'm honestly not sure until I finish Barrows it won't really be clear and you know what content I want to do next so I'm gonna have to think on it a little bit before I unlock another chunk. Just a few more bones to go and that's gonna get me to 52 prayer. That is gonna be actually the last prayer I can unlock except if I do a couple more quests or if I go to the Chambers of Zarek and get those scrolls so... 
yeah, that'll be the last uh, prayer unlock I'll have for quite a while that I can use chunks with, so eventually I'll have to go down and actually get all the other ones unlocked. The Chambers of Zarek one is kind of iffy again. I'm still not even sure if I want to do raids or not, because getting carried through them is just, I don't know. I'd rather do content by myself, but I don't know. I might change my mind on that eventually. I just got through a trip with my new gear, and the change is just so good. You'll see plenty of runs coming up. I'll definitely toss in a lot of clips of chests and kills, but... Being able to tank way more hits and killing the brothers a lot quicker thanks to magic dart means I can easily get three to four chests before having to bank, at least if the melee brothers don't hit me too often. There's even a real chance I could add carols to the kill count depending on how long it takes me to kill Derek's and how many prayer points I have left after killing him without having to use my prayer pot. Hmm, nope, nothing out of this chest. And nothing out of this chest. Oh, I missed the chest on that one, but nothing out of it either. And nope, nothing out of this chest either. So I brought my rune scimitar down with me this time. I'm going to do a couple of runs where I go for 88% because um, aside from getting Barrow's pieces from killing the brothers, you also have a chance to get like blood runes, death runes, chaos runes, like a little more gold if you have a higher percentage. And pretty much every post I read says 88% is like the perfect number to max out on runes. So I'm going to do this for a couple of runs and just see if that actually helps or not help refund some of the runes I'm using for these kills. Oh, well, I definitely got more runes this time around, but no Barrow's piece. No Barrow's piece, but I am happy to see more death runes coming out of here. Nope, nothing on this one. No Barrow's piece, but more death runes. More death runes, but no Barrow's piece. Still more death runes, happy to see those, but no Barrow's piece. So I went ahead and did a kill uh, with Carol's this trip. If I, I realize if I start with Derek and then go right to Carol's, as long as uh, Derek's or Carol's aren't one of the final end bosses, I can actually kill both of them uh, with 52 prayer without even needing to drink my prayer potion. So actually, I could add Carol's to the rotation pretty normally. Let's see, no, oh, nothing there. Not a big surprise, but it does with being able, or killing five brothers. It does get me a lot closer to looting a piece. So I can actually reliably add Carol's to the kill list now. It's not Aram's is still kind of a problem. It's not that I couldn't kill him. It's just again, it's all about you know not wasting prayer pots if I can help it. And that's going to be my 100th Barrow Chest. Sadly, no piece to celebrate that, but I am never going to turn down Death and Blood Runes. Oh my god! Holy shit, there it is! That is the first drop on my Barrow's Runes. Dude, that is better than I could have hoped. The first Barrow's piece I get, and it's a fucking plate body. The biggest possible upgrade for my tankiness. And there it is, staring me in the face. I, oh shit, uh, I don't have 70 defense, so I can't wear it. Like, bro, the helmet, the plate leg, any of it would have been good. But, oh my god, to get a plate body so soon after adding Carol's to the kill count. Okay, there's 70 defense coming in after some more hill giants, and I can slap this bad boy on. The difference this is going to make is going to be huge for my tanking against the melee brothers when my prayer runs out. I can't wait to go back and test it out. Plus, I can uh, high out the chain body, so that'll give me some extra cash. So I tanked three of the melee brothers, and Varix was the only one who could actually hit me this time around, which doesn't really surprise me, because he always collapsed me a few times, but Guthans and Torags couldn't land a single hit on me. So I ran over to Zanaris really fast and decided to grab the Dragon Longsword. It's a bit stronger than the Rune Scimitar, but it is one tick slower, unfortunately. So far, though, it's actually doing pretty well. Plus, it's nice having the uh, special attack, because it helps me do a little more damage. No, 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 no. There, dude, there's no way. It has only been, what, 15 chests since I got the chest plate, and I get another piece. Like, it's not, like, if it was Derek's legs or Torag's legs, that'd be a little better, but, like, still, I got another piece. It's still a huge upgrade for my tanking. Like, dude, Carol's, he was, Carol's was the missing link. He was the one hiding all the Barrow's pieces from me this whole time. I kind of wasn't paying attention when my uh, prayer ran out of Carol, so he did manage to tag me before I could switch over to my tank gear, but... Man, it's just like the plate body, now that I have the skirt. This is going to make tanking these guys even easier than it already was. I'm going to go through way less food now. Okay, I don't know who at Jagex owes me a favor, or if praying to God Ash on Twitter actually works, but this this just blows the rune kaichu at RNG out of the fucking water. Not only did I get a third Barrow's piece, six chests after the skirt, but it's a helmet slot. Three pieces in a row, and they're all different slots, and they're all tanking gear. Like, look at the defense stats. Everything is over 300 except Crush, but even that's damn close. It's, it's just nice to see all the work I put in towards doing these runs pay off like this. Just look at this. Another new run against Guthans, and he's not landing a single hit. 
This barely happened with my old gear, and now, except for maybe Varix, I can just sit back and watch the other Melee Brothers just go down every time. You know, I was thinking with that just absolutely disgusting amount of RNG coming in and getting me all those Bears pieces, I actually did just run out of potatoes, so you know what? I am going to take a minute. I'm going to build my menagerie for Rocky. I'm going to make a few other upgrades I want in the house, just like a nice little celebration, because again, I don't even understand what just happened to be completely honest i have never seen rng like that on this account i can only hope that it follows for the rest of the pieces all right got all my materials picked up let's go ahead and get this place set up for rocky the one thing i found out while i was gathering everything up is for whatever reason uh for the pet house you have to build like the next like the first one and then you build up from there so like i have to build the oak house and then move on to the teak house I don't, I mean, that's not a big deal or anything. I just, I don't understand the idea behind that. See, like, I have the materials, but I have to start with the oak house. Which, eh, I mean, that's, that, okay. That's actually kind of sad, like, how how bad that looks. But, oh my god, yeah, look at that, dude. Just one upgrade, and that looks so much better for Rocky. Speaking of, let's toss him in there. Did he, oh yeah, he's in there. Yep, there he is. I wonder... Yeah, I love Pets Drum. I wonder if he'll come out on his own, like if I leave or something. Huh. I don't know how to get him out of there, but yeah, he'll probably come out on his own. But yeah, hopefully I can end up um, with another pet to get in here. The, uh, I'm trying to think what other what other pets could I even get. I mean, I guess I could get another skilling pet. I know I talked about the, uh, the mole pet at some point because uh, the mole's lair is within a safe chunk in Falador. So yeah, hopefully I end up with a little buddy I can toss in here so Rocky doesn't have to hang out on his own all the time. With Rocky's room all done, I think that'll be a good place to call the episode. I'm still just completely thrown by the ridiculous RNG given to me by those Barrow's chests. Adding one more brother really was the answer, and I'm just so glad I was able to upgrade my gear by such an insane margin. Going back, I started doing five brothers around 74 or 75 chests, so it took barely 60 chests to get my hands on all three of those pieces. Honestly, the only thing that would make it that much better would be getting either uh, Torag's or Derek's legs, and weirdly enough, I'd actually really like a set of Torag's hammers. You can't use a shield with them, but it would be a really good crush weapon for me to have if I want to go after the Seracnus cudgel or using them on anything that has a low crush defense, but with the pieces coming in, the dream at this point would definitely be uh, to see full Guthans and some Carol's pieces for that big, big uh, mage tanking bonus. If I get a hold of those, maybe I'd be willing to add Arams and just go for the full clear. Also, I went ahead and made a clan chat if anyone wants to hang out while I do more Barrows runs, and I'm going to drop the name of that plus my Twitch link down in the description below. It'd be cool to get a piece live on stream, so we'll have to see if my RNG can hold out, and I just keep absolutely getting spooned by that content creator luck. If you enjoyed the episode and like the series, make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you'll be the first to know when the next episode comes out. And with all of that said, thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next episode.